This is the Genesis GV60, an all-new, all-electric coupe SUV from Hyundai's luxury division. While it may look completely different to anything you may have seen before, it's based on the very accomplished Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6. That means it will take on cars like the Tesla Model Y, the Audi Q4 e-tron and the Ford Mustang Mach-E when it goes on sale later this year. Genesis is a company that a few of you may not be all that familiar with. The first cars trickled into the UK only late last year, but they were all fitted with petrol or diesel engines. This is the first Genesis EV. But before we talk about powertrains, let's first talk about styling. I'll be the first to admit, when pictures of this car landed in my inbox last year, I hated it. I really wasn't sure about the way this car looks, but here in the metal, it's actually really well proportioned. It's nice and squat. It's not upright like the Ionic 5. It's perhaps not as cool and sleek as a Kia EV6, but this car's SUV proportions are sure to win it plenty of fans when it does go on sale in the UK. But Genesis hasn't gone full EV at the front here. You do get this kind of traditional lower radiator grille, but there is this flush panel at the top. Now, the clamshell bonnet, that runs all the way around to the side. You've got full LED headlights. Those look a little bit similar to the ones you'll find elsewhere in the range. 21 inch wheels, SUV styling here with the cladding. You've got digital door mirrors, flush door handles, and of course, this coupe style roof line. But note, it only dips off behind the rear seat, so that should mean more space on the inside. Did you hear that? Even the sound of the door closing, even on this late stage prototype, feels really high end. And it's that sense of quality throughout that makes this feel like a true premium car, worthy of that Genesis badge. Now we'll come back to this blue leather in a moment when we sit in the front, but Let's give you an idea of practicality. There is loads of knee room. Headroom is perhaps a little bit tight, but for a coupe SUV, you really can't complain. Space back here is actually really generous. There's a big net down here for storing odds and ends. There's a, an armrest with a couple of cup holders and some pockets on the back of the doors and a cup holder in here. There's even heated seats on this top spec version. The boot is about par for the course in this area of the market, 432 litres with the rear seats in place. That's about 30 litres more than you get in a Mustang, but down on the Tesla, or indeed anything like a Volkswagen ID4. Again, that sloping roofline doesn't help outright practicality. Thankfully, there is space under the nose for the charging cables, though the size of the front trunk depends on whether you go for the rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive model. 53 litres as standard, it shrinks to just 20 litres in dual motor cars. Well, how about in here then? Okay, we cannot ignore this blue leather everywhere for any longer. It may not be to everyone's taste, but then neither is the lime paint on the outside. You can, of course, get it in black on black if you should so wish, but I'm just glad that you, we, can have the choice. Elsewhere though, it all just feels a little bit different in here, if you will. There's quite a lot going on, quite a lot of different shapes, and I'm not necessarily sure that's a good thing. Some of it feels quite fussy. There's some silvery, plasticky stuff down here, some knurled effect to the click wheel down there. This climate control panel, it's actually pretty easy to use. You get physical up and down temperature buttons, but some of it's within a touch screen, which just doesn't seem quite right. This though is fantastic. The two screens up here, you get obviously a digital instrument cluster and then a full screen up here with all the stuff you'd need. It's really responsive, it's really crisp, it feels really modern. Speaking of modern, digital door mirrors. I'm not convinced about these. They look a little bit odd on the outside and they look more than a little bit odd on the inside. It feels as if they've just plonked two iPads to the doors and it takes a bit of recalibration of the brain as well. The basic car gets a 225 brake horsepower rear mounted motor while the all-wheel drive version turns down the wick ever so slightly on that rear motor, but straps an additional 100 brake horsepower to the front axle. The performance car that we have here splits its power evenly for almost 500 brake horsepower. 0-62 takes just four seconds, and top speed stands at 146 miles an hour. All cars get the same 77 kilowatt hour battery that you'll find in the Kia EV6. The most efficient rear-wheel drive model, Genesis says, will do up to 320 miles on a charge though opting for the performance cars sees that tumble to around 290 miles. And it will charge quickly as well. Like the Kia and the Hyundai, the GV60 benefits from 800 volt 
charging technology, which means that if you can find an appropriate 350 kilowatt public rapid charger, not one of these, this is for home charging, then you can top up the batteries from 10 to 80% in around 18 minutes. Once again, the Koreans are leading the way when it comes to fast charging technology. If you want to charge at home, the GV60 will accept 11 kilowatt three phase charging. It will do that naught to 100 in around seven hours. A more common seven kilowatt home wall box will do the job overnight. Like the Ionic 5, Genesis supports vehicle to load charging, allowing you to power other electronics such as a laptop or a projector using the car's battery. The GV60 also features active noise cancelling to improve refinement, as well as a system called Road Preview, which uses data from the car's cameras and navigation system to adjust the suspension settings on the move for extra comfort. We'll reserve judgment on whether that stuff is more than just a gimmick until after we've driven the car later this year. We love the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and this new Genesis GV60 wraps up everything we like about those two cars into a yet another distinctively styled package. I like it, you may not, but that's not the crux of this review. The point is, the Koreans, they're on a roll. You can have your range, your charging tech, your practicality, and then you get a great big dollop of personality on top, whatever suits your vibe. Whoever said that EVs had to be these nondescript white goods? Genesis thinks otherwise. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.